Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Anchor Homestead. We have a fun and exciting day today. Well, it's fun and exciting to me because we are going to be starting pepper seeds. Hopefully, all the peppers that we are going to grow in the garden, we are going to get started today. But what I want to do before I get into our new grow room is I want to get these two baskets of onions caramelizing in the oven. So these onions can be caramelizing while we are planting seeds. I am going to pressure can these onions. We're gonna make caramelized onions to go in the pressure canner. Caramelized onions are one of Josh and I's favorite things. And I just learned you can pressure can them. These are onions that I purchased from a local farmer this summer. They're organic onions. The red ones are starting to show just some slight signs of needing to be used up. So that's a perfect time to get going on this project today. I bought 160 pounds of onions from a local farmer this year. The red onions are the ones we're gonna be working with today. These are the ones that are showing signs of wear. The white onions that I have down there are still perfectly fine. So we're gonna save those for fresh eating. So what I'm gonna do is I have my roaster pan out here. I need to get a big bowl for compost. I'm just gonna use this paper bag and then I can throw the paper bag and everything in the compost. But how we're gonna caramelize these onions is we're gonna do it in a roaster pan so they can slow roast while we're doing other things. So I'm going to turn the oven on to 300. When you're cutting onions to make caramelized onions, the best way to do that after I get them peeled, I'll show you. Is to cut the onion, what is called from pole to pole. So this is the flowering end, this is the root end. And you wanna slice them like this, as opposed to like this, because it, how the cell structure for the onion is, is it keeps the onion intact more. They kind of completely fall apart if you cut them this way. While I was down there getting these onions, I went through all the boxes of onions. I have three boxes down there, now I only have two but I was able to do an inventory and scan for any soft ones, any ones that were bad. There were two that were bad that are just heading straight to the compost. And most of them were doing really well. And I'm kind of surprised because that's the first time I've done that in since the baby was born. So we're talking, it was actually a few weeks before he was born. So it's been quite a few months since that was done. So I'm really glad. I was a little bit nervous going down there thinking, oh no, there's probably going to be a lot of bad ones, but there were only two. So I am happy about that. You can see some of them are starting to sprout. So they're not bad yet, but they, they could go bad pretty quick if I just let them sit down there. I love that I am processing produce from last year's harvest and we are starting to start seeds for hopefully this year's harvest. Hopefully we are going to get a bunch of peppers and I won't have to purchase peppers from a local farmer to preserve up, but I just love that my, my life revolves around food. Food in the form of gardening, food in the form of food prep, food in the form of food preservation and sourcing local whenever possible, and just going to the grocery store and buying food <laughs> that I can't buy locally. This is just fun. I, I love food and I love being in the kitchen. I know I said we were gonna cook these on the in the oven, which we are, but I've got a lot more onions to cut. We're probably not even halfway done. And this roaster pan is almost full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this starting to cook down on the stove so that I can, as this cooks down, I can pay attention while I'm in here. Once I go into the grow room, I'm gonna put it in the oven. 
but I can start having these cook down a little bit quicker on the stove so I can continue to put more onions in this roaster pan. Now I just added some salt to help draw out the moisture and help caramelize and kind of cook these down a little bit quicker. And then I am gonna add some of our garlic infused olive oil to help cook this down as well. I am so excited to have caramelized onions on the pantry shelf. Hopefully we absolutely love them. We love caramelized onions. But to have the convenience of just doing a big batch and then being able to open them whenever I want to start a pasta sauce or top lentils and rice or lentils and rice is one of Josh and I's favorite side dishes. Oh my gosh, it's snowing outside. <laughs> That's crazy. I had no idea it was supposed to snow today. But I don't make it very often because I don't like to caramelize the, well it's not that I don't like it, but I don't always have the time to caramelize the onions for rice and lentils. So if I have this, we'll be able to eat that a lot more. I've kind of found that I think it's the fastest if I go through and I kind of cut quite a few of them, I get them peeled and then I go through and slice them all. Now you can see on this one, it's a little bit soft. This layer is a little bit soft. So I'm gonna take one more layer down just so that we have a nice, clean, firm onion right here. And it is really snowing out there. So I'm really glad I'm getting to this today because the last thing I would want is to lose a bunch more of these onions. My goal this year is to hopefully try to grow a year's worth of onions for Josh and I. I have yet to accomplish that goal, but we might be able to do that this year together. This one's starting to sprout from the inside, so I'm just peeling that inside part off, and then the rest of it is good to go. The onion is starting to sprout like this. I am taking that off just because those don't caramelize really well. They are totally fine to eat those little sprouts, but they tend to not caramelize like the rest of the onion. So if I'm seeing that sprout, we're just gonna take that off. The reason onions sprout is because they are biannuals, which means they go to seed every two years. So when you plant an onion seed, the first year, what the goal of that onion plant is to do is to produce a big bulb like this. And typically you want to harvest it that first year. If you left this in the ground, what would happen is it would overwinter and then it would sprout like it's trying to do in my downstairs basement. And this sprout right here is going to flower the second year and produce seed from that second year. So that is why onions try to flower on you because that's their goal. Their goal is to try to store as much energy in the bulb the first year they grow and then they overwinter and then they try to produce a flower which is going to produce seed so that they can continue to perpetuate themselves. Carrots are biannuals as well. And I think those are the only two I can think of that I know off the top of my head. But I'm sure there's a lot more garden produce that we grow in our gardens that are biannuals. But those are the only two that I know right off the top of my head. Our onions are still cooking away. I'm still processing onions. But what I've decided to do while I'm in the kitchen and it smells and I'm stepping on onion peels and it smells like onions and it is strong. We are going to process some more onions for the freezer because I love having diced onions in the freezer and I don't have any in the freezer right now. So we're going to go ahead and go downstairs and get some more onions. What prompted me to do this is I need to go downstairs and get 
half pint jars because I want to pressure can these caramelized onions in half pint jars. I thought those were half pints, but it says pint jars on the box. And here are half pints. I need to wash these, so I also want to get these in the dishwasher washing while the onions cook. I was not planning on doing this today. That's why I didn't have these jars washed and prepped and ready to go for us. I got my jars in the dishwasher, another round of onions diced or sliced. I was thinking about dicing and freezing onions, but I think I'm gonna freeze dry them because I have zero onion powder in my pantry and I have enough onions here that I could make a decent amount of onion powder. So that's the route we're gonna go instead of freezing them in the freezer, we're gonna freeze dry them. So I just got out my four freeze dryer trays and I'm going to get these cut up for the freeze dryer trays. I finally got all the onions that I brought up here skinned. Now I'm going to dice the ones that are gonna go in the freeze dryer. Because I'm gonna powder these, I am not being super precise on how I do this. I'm just going through and dicing them. And then I've got my tray here. I think what I can do is just scrape it yep, right into the tray. I'm gonna dice as many as will fit on my four trays. And then the rest of these onions, if I have any left over, I will slice and I will go ahead and put those in the caramelized onion pot. four trays of onions filled and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go throw these in the freezer to freeze before we stick them in the freeze dryer because we're gonna be starting seeds in now the grow room slash freeze dry room I don't want it to be loud while I'm in there and so you can either freeze dry from frozen or from fresh if you freeze dry from frozen you're saving your freeze dryer a step so because we're gonna be in the grow room in just a few minutes this is gonna go in the freezer after we pot up, or after we start our seeds, then we'll throw these in the freeze dryer. Before I head out to start those seeds, I wanna get all of this onion mess cleaned up. And I wanna bring these onion peels to the compost. Josh is sticking this in the oven for me at 300 and we're going to go outside and plant some seeds. I cannot believe today is the day that we are starting some seeds. I have been waiting for a very long time to do this. I had to scrounge around for some pens so that we can make sure we label. I am going to be better about labeling this year so I know what things are, or at least that's the goal. I brought some water because we're going to need some water and I think we can just go ahead and get started. Now what we need to do, I'm going to shut this door so it can be a little bit warmer in here. And while I was getting the water and a couple things out, I was thinking, you know what, there's more than just peppers I can start today. I can start celery, cauliflower, cabbage, peppers. I've got this Clydesdale planter and what you do is this is like four dollars or five dollars on Amazon I can link it below up here is a calendar you put where this red line is on your last frost date 
and then it has onions, peas, spinach, all the vegetables going down here and it tells you what you can start inside when. And I can also link down below where you can Google to, or search with using your zip code, the Farmer's Almanac, so you can figure out what your last frost date is. Mine is March 16th, which is about two weeks later than it was at our last homestead. We're probably 15, 20 minutes from our last homestead, but we are at a way higher elevation here. So it's pushing our frost date back a little bit. So let's start with hot peppers and sweet peppers or just peppers in general, because I know that I want to get and need to get those started today. We'll see what other things we get started. We need to check on those onions periodically. I'm not starting onions from seed this year. I'm giving myself a grace on that and we are going to purchase seedlings when it comes to our onions. Otherwise, I would be starting onions today as well. So we have our peppers here. I still have to decide what peppers I want to plant. I know I want a lot of bell peppers this year and one thing that I'm so excited about this new homestead is the garden is south facing. It's on a south facing slope and there is gonna be an abundance of sunlight. So even though my frost date is two weeks farther than it was at my last homestead, I struggled so much to have enough sun at my last homestead because there were so many trees around the garden that my peppers never really thrived. So I'm hoping that here my peppers can thrive. And I think that because they're gonna get going to be getting so much sun every day that the lack of or the two week pushback from the frost date, I think they'll catch up and I think it'll be no problem at all. I think they'll even do better. This right here is my sweet peppers. I want to plant King of the North. I don't want as many varieties this year when it comes to my vegetables. I want more just less variety and I want more of everything that I plant. So I'm gonna be a little bit more picky when it comes to what I'm planting. This is something I've attempted to grow for three years in a row and I have never harvested one pepper. So we are gonna attempt that again, fourth time's the charm. I want jalapenos. I know I have a ton of jalapeno pepper seeds in here. We're definitely doing more sugar rush peppers. I loved those last year. I wanna do poblanos. So I'm just gonna take a second and go through here and figure out what I'm gonna plant. I can link where I get my seeds from. I get them from a few different areas. One thing is I do really like Johnny's seeds. The quality's great. They have a huge variety. You can buy in bulk. They carry hybrids, which sometimes I want a hybrid, but the problem with their seed packets is there's no picture. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm Googling the couple of these peppers because I thought that I thought I had two different varieties of poblanos here. Uh, Santo, Santo Domingo F1 and a Baron F1. Well, the Santo Domingo is actually a Serrano pepper. So I'm glad that I Googled these so that I can figure out and I can make sure that I'm planting what I want to plant. I'm trying to pare back how many varieties I'm planting and so I'm really going through and Googling to make sure that I'm planting the seeds I want to, which the Baron F1 is a Poblano from Johnny Seeds and I do want to make sure that I plant that. So I'm going to plant that. But because there is no picture, I have to Google it versus the other See, all the other seed companies I order from have pictures on them, which is very, very helpful. See, Jedi, I, I'm pretty sure I ordered two poblano peppers, and this Jedi F1 might be a poblano pepper, but it might not. And the only way I know is if I Google it. What I should do is write on it poblano pepper. That's what I'm going to do. No, see, this is a jalapeno pepper because it doesn't say, it just says the actual name on it. And this says the Jedi F1 is our largest jalapeno offering. Jedi produces four to four and a half inch fruits. So I'm gonna write on here jalapeno so that I don't have to Google it next time. I need to know what it is if I don't use all the seeds and this is a poblano. Perfect. Here is what I'm gonna be planting for hot peppers. 
Chinese five color. These are not my favorite to eat. They're fine. They make a good hot sauce. But the reason I am planting these is because they are absolutely stunning and they were one of the easiest peppers to grow. So if anything else, I know I will get these peppers and I'm just excited. I've had these in my garden every year. When I have talked about needing grow lights in my first year gardening and how it was absolutely terrible <laughs> because I killed 99% of what I started indoors because I didn't have grow lights, these still survived and I was able to plant those and I got a teeny tiny harvest. So they're really, really hardy peppers. As opposed to these Tabasco peppers, I have attempted these, like I said many times and I've never gotten anything from them. So we're hoping this year's the year. We're gonna do a cayenne pepper, our sugar rush peach. Those are one of my favorite peppers, absolutely delicious. We're gonna do ancho peppers. I'm hoping to maybe dehydrate these and smoke them to make an ancho powder for like a homemade chili powder. I think that'd be really good. Poblanos, I have two different varieties here. I wanna use up these seeds and then these are just a hybrid that I think should produce uh, peppers faster than the ones from Baker Creek. I'm gonna do a jalapeno and those are my hot peppers. So I have five varieties of hot peppers. I like hot peppers. And I have two varieties of bell peppers that I'm going to do this year. I have King of the North and I have King Arthur. This is a hybrid. This is an heirloom. I'm going to plant both of these and we'll kind of do a test side by side to see how well the hybrid does as opposed to the heirloom one does. I think there's one more sweet pepper that I want to plant that I planted last year that now I'm just thinking about. It's called a Marconi pepper. Let's see, where did I put those seeds? I should leave these out until I put them away. Yes, I'm gonna put these up here on the shelf until I put them away. I'm gonna be better about keeping my seeds organized because I have a place for them. Let's see. I want a sweet pepper that I can throw on the grill this summer. Big gems, I think are hot. Yeah, big gems are hot, so that's in the wrong box. I want more, oh, I'm in the hot pepper package, no wonder. All those peppers are hot. I wanna do a ton of grilled veggies this summer. One of my goals, we did this, let's see, I don't think I have any more Esvarsky peppers. No, those are gone. Those don't say what they are like. These Marconis, red Marconis. I'm gonna grow these, because I think these are supposed to be good for Harvest first fruits early to encourage continuous production. Cut, don't pull fruit from the stem. A sweet red pepper from Italy has somewhat of elongated fruit, 12 inches long, about three inches across. Early variety with high yield. Ideal for frying, tasty at green as well. So I'm gonna grow those too. So we have three sweet peppers we're gonna grow this year. So one thing I've learned during this pantry challenge is I think that when it would be a really good time to do a pantry challenge would be in the spring and well summer so i'm thinking i might do that i don't know now that we have our pepper seeds picked out i am going to empty one of these bags of vermont compost into this tub this is the first year i'm using vermont compost to start my seedlings this is what nicole from flower hill farm uses to start all her seedlings, and if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. So we, oh my goodness, look at that color. We are gonna use this this year. So that's not completely bone dry, but I am going to pour a half gallon of water in here, and I'm gonna mix that up. And this is what we're gonna use this year to start all of our seedlings. Oh my goodness, it smells incredible. It's, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I've used a few different things to start my seedlings. I've used ProMix and just potting soil. I don't like ProMix because it's so sterile. It doesn't seem to, you don't create a really healthy plant. So I'm hoping that this Vermont compost is gonna be the ticket that I need to have some really beautiful, healthy plants. Compost smells absolutely beautiful. So these are just some trays that I've had. These 
bottom trays are incredible. I've had these, this is going on four years. They are gonna hold up probably for another four or five years. I had bought some cheaper ones and they didn't, I just threw them away in the move because they barely lasted. I, they had holes in them last year when I was using them, but I just made it work. But I really like these thick ones. So when it comes to gardening, I'm not one that makes much of a plan. I kind of just get in there and go for it, especially because I, this year, I don't know really how much, I know how much garden space I have and I could sit down and write it down, but that's not super fun to me. That kind of takes some of the fun. It's kind of like why I don't like meal planning. I like to feel inspired and just get out there and do it. So I'm just going to fill these trays up and start seeds. If I plant too many, then I'll give them away. If I don't plant enough, then I might go buy some seedlings or I'll plant more stuff directly in the ground. But what I like to do when I start seeds is plant a lot because I know that I'm probably gonna kill stuff so I like to plant enough to where I give myself some margin when it comes to that. And then I just kind of like to get in here and have fun and not overthink it too much. I've had a lot of failures when it comes to gardening, but every one of those failures has taught me more than my successes because I know, oh, I'm not going to do that again. So I like to pre-moisten the soil a little bit before I put them in my trays. And then I like to fill my trays in this tub so that I make less of a mess. Now, I will make a mess, but I am grateful that this year I'm doing this in this room as opposed to doing it in my kitchen, which the last few years I have started seeds. I've started them in my kitchen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a few minutes to fill these up. I have only ordered four bags of this Vermont compost. I am going to probably need to order quite a few more. If you are interested in that, I can link it below, but just know it's not on Prime if you order it on Amazon, which is where I got it. And it does take, it took a week and a half or two weeks, I think, to get it. So just plan for that if that's something you want. This year, the way I'm gonna mark these trays is I'm gonna use some tape on the side. And I think that that's the way I'm gonna go. I kinda of do this different every year and we're gonna see if this works for us this year. Well, maybe this isn't gonna work because it's so sticky I can't get it off. All right, so let's see. I've got this tape, we're gonna use this. Hopefully this works. This corner and fold it in half so that when I am ready to pull this off I've got a tag to pull it off with so that's what I'm going to do on both sides so that should work so that's how we're going to label it hopefully the pin actually works on it we should try yes I can write on it so now I'm thinking how far apart can I plant these so maybe I am going to do a little bit of math here so I can plant these 18 inches apart. My beds are 16 feet by 16 feet by 4 feet. So that's 64 feet. So about 60. So I'm going to say you could plant 16. So you can put about 40 pepper plants per raised bed. <clears throat> if I did my math correct, I could have done my math incorrect. I don't know. I would like to have probably, I wanna see if I can grow enough peppers for Josh and I to last a year so I don't have to purchase them. That is an item that I purchased from a local farmer and if I could grow them, that would be pretty cool. So, Hmm, 
25, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to start putting things, seeds in ground and we're going to go from there. I can tell you that the Vermont compost is a game changer for me when it comes to my seedlings and their health. I have never had as healthy looking seedlings as I have this year. And the only thing that I've changed between this year and last year is the Vermont compost. So I'm really, really excited about that. I did order a seeding square. So I'm going to attempt to do some seeding squares instead of using these 52 cell trays, uh, the next round of seeds I start. And so that will be a fun experiment to try something different as well. But my peppers so far are looking healthy and I'm so thrilled with them. So I end up doing one whole tray of sweet peppers. So they're, these are 52 cell trays. And then I end up doing one whole tray of hot peppers. That's probably more hot peppers <laughs> than I need, but I can gift hot pepper plants to people who want a garden that are in my life. I'll have plenty of um, plants to share. So I'm not only going to start these peppers here, but I'm also going to be starting some other things here in a few minutes. What I like to do is put holes in the entire tray first, and then I put the seeds in the trays, and then I close up the holes that I have filled so that I know where I have already planted something and where I still have room to plant something. We officially have garden 2023 started. Just like that. Do I technically have a place to put those plants yet? No, but soon enough I will. So now I'm going to do the hot peppers over here. Oh, see, I didn't even label, did not even label the Marconi peppers. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. You may have heard me hint at it, but if you're new around here, labeling has never been my strong suit. I always am, when I put the seeds in the ground, I can get labels on the trays, but by the time I up pop them and I transplant the seedlings into the ground, outside in the garden, they have typically lost their labels, or in the past I have just used a regular Sharpie when labeling my markers, and those fade in the sunlight. So I am now the proud owner of some UV protective markers so that when I label them, they're not going to fade in the sun. This tray here are my hot peppers, so we've got the hot peppers all planted for this year's garden. I know that I planted way more hot peppers probably than I'm going to need, so I'm going to be able to gift a bunch of those, and I'm looking forward to be able to share some of the love of the seedlings that I start. Now, back to the labeling. So last year in the garden, there were definitely some varieties of peppers that I knew exactly what they were just because I, like the sugar rush peppers, sugar rush peach peppers, I knew what those were once they started producing fruit because I only planted one sugar rush peach pepper and I knew what it looked like. But if I have two varieties of bell peppers like I'm planting this year, the King of the North and the King Arthur, I really wanna know which ones are which so that I can compare the two so that next year if one does better, I know which one I want to plant. I can already tell you that the hybrid one that I got from Johnny Seeds sprouted about, a, it, it took about seven days, I think, for it to sprout, and it took almost two weeks for the heirloom variety to sprout. So when it comes to the fruit production, I'm curious if the heirloom is going to take longer to produce fruit as well. So we'll just see. And that's why labeling is something that I'm super <laughs> going to be try to do a better job on this year. Now, I did go in quite a few times throughout this planting process to check on our onions. And by having them in the oven, it really was something that I didn't have to really keep a close eye on because the heat was an overall heat. It wasn't a heat that was just coming from the bottom and I didn't have to worry about them burning as much. Now that we've got the peppers done, so I officially have all the peppers started that I am going to start this year, which is two trays. I am moving on to some other varieties. When I water in my seedlings, I just use plain water. I don't have any fertilizer or anything in it. I just use plain water. So that is what is in that pump. 
I like that pump because it holds a ton of water and I don't have to hold on to it. Some of the spray bottles, the you have to hold the water container, you know, like the reservoir and it. And because of that, the reservoirs are a lot smaller. So I like this one because the reservoir can sit on the ground and I think it's like a two gallon or a three gallon thing of water. And soon when all of these shelves are filled with seedlings, that won't last very long. But at the beginning right now, it's perfect. So right here, I am starting some cauliflower, celery, and cabbage. I've got quite a few different varieties just from, oh, and we start Snapdragons. Now I really like MI Gardener's seed packs because he has so much clear information on the back. You can see here, it says start eight to 10 weeks before. He, his seed packs probably are my favorite when it comes to just glancing at the back and knowing what what you should do with the seed, when you should plant it, if it's frost hardy, what type of conditions does it need? Does it need full sun, partial sun, things like that. And that's just one thing that I absolutely love about his seed packets. They definitely give you the most information. The Johnny seed packets give you a ton of information too, but it's not as easy to read. They're not in really easy boxes to read. There's a lot of words and you have to really kind of sift through the information, if that makes sense. So we're gonna plant some Utah tall celery. I just used the last of the celery from last year's garden that was in the freezer. One thing about gardening and home preservation and things is it's kind of, it's a process to learn how you like to preserve things. So I freeze dried some celery and I froze celery. And until you, you know, play around with different preservation methods, you're not going to know which one's your favorite. My favorite when it comes to preserving celery, now I know because I freeze dried and I have froze it. I don't really like freeze dried celery. So this next year when I preserve celery, all of it is going to be either eaten fresh or I will freeze it. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is asparagus. This asparagus, I should have had it sit in water for 24 hours the seeds before I planted them but I didn't and they all germinated just fine now a lot of people recommend planting two seeds per cell and I am one that has a very hard time thinning I hate cutting plants and killing plants so I this year I'm just planting one seed per cell so a couple if they don't germinate then I'll have some empty cells but you'll see later that I do find ways to fill those seedling cells but I don't like to waste seed and I have have such good germination rates on all these seeds that I have purchased in the past. So I, I just don't want to waste seed by putting two per cell. Well, we did it. We have officially started this year's garden. We planted cabbage, asparagus, snapdragons, cauliflower, sweet and hot peppers, and celery. What I'm gonna do now to help prevent algae from growing on the top of these, last year was the first year I put vermiculite on my seedlings, makes a big difference, especially with the ones that are gonna be indoors the longest. There's the higher potential for algae growth. So I just bought this. It, it wasn't very expensive and I didn't even use half the bag last year. What I'm gonna do is sprinkle this pretty generously on the top. If I had cinnamon, a cheap cinnamon, I should say, I would sprinkle cinnamon on the top of this as well. That also helps prevent that from growing, but I don't have any. So next time I'm in town, I'll run into the store and just buy the most affordable cinnamon I can. The cinnamon I have in my kitchen right now is not the cinnamon I want to be sprinkling on my seedlings. I did that last year for the first time and that did seem to make a difference. I guess both the vermiculite and the cinnamon were two things I did last year that worked well and I don't know which one was the one that actually helped prevent the algae, but I'm gonna just do the same thing I did last year this year because it seemed to help. I'm also gonna take a second while I'm standing over here and I'm gonna plug in my heat mats, which I have on just sitting on this table already. The cool thing about this heat mat that I have, on the heat mat it says what temperature things like to germinate at. 
And I also have this guy. This is a thermometer that I need to plug in. So here is where it says the temperature. It says, you know, the variety and then the temperature they like to germinate at. And we are going to do peppers. And so they like 85 degrees. So I have this thermometer here and I plug the thermometer in the soil in one of the trays. And then I did this backwards. I plug the heat mat into this thermometer and then I plug that into the wall. So now I can set what temperature I want this heat mat to heat to. And I want it to set to 85. So I am going to reset this. You just hold the set button down and then it starts to flash and then you can adjust the temperature. So this looks crazy, but the soil temperature is 57.3 currently and I have it set to 85. Now I don't want to germinate all of my seedlings on this tray because it's gonna be too warm. So my two peppers are here and here. And these two, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw those over here onto this heat mat and I'm gonna unplug this heat mat. These cabbages and asparagus and cauliflower will actually do better sprouting at a lower temperature or they will sprout at the room temperature in here without being on the heat mat. So I have my two heat mats plugged in together right now, so I'm gonna unplug them so that this side of this table is not warm. I am gonna take a second and clean up my mess. And then I have one more thing I need to do to these trays before we call them ready to go, is I'm gonna cover them in a layer of plastic I don't have humidity domes for these trays anymore because they broke and I got rid of them during the move because they were all cracked and everything. And so I'm just going to use a little piece of saran wrap and that's going to be our humidity dome right there. We got that done. Now we get to go inside and finish the onions. When I grabbed this saran wrap, I did check on the onions and they are looking good. While I'm in here, before I get going back inside, I'm gonna get the freeze dryer cooling because it has to cool for 15 minutes. Now I want to get going on these onions. I could keep them in the oven to finish caramelizing, but now that I have a minute to pay attention to them, I'm gonna put them back on the stove because the stove, I'll be able to cook them down a little bit faster. This is what they're looking like. Let's see. They've got quite a bit of liquid still in here to cook away. I think I'm gonna drain some of this liquid off actually, but I need to get the stove turned on. I was able to skim off this much liquid. I'm not gonna throw that away. I'm gonna figure out something to use that in this week for dinner. I don't know what, maybe a soup or something. And then we're gonna let these continue to reduce and caramelize. There's a few more ingredients we need to add to this. But while this is sitting here and I need to pay attention to it, I'm gonna get the canner and the jars ready. In the time it took me to get the canner set up, the jars ready, my dishwasher unloaded and loaded, the onions are about done. You can see how much liquid has come out of them. They're really starting to brown up nicely and becoming really caramelized. This is cooked down so much. I'm really hoping I like this because I invested a lot of onions into this project. So they're almost done.
When I look at the recipes for canning caramelized onions, almost every one has onions, brown sugar, oil, balsamic vinegar, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Well, we already added salt. We added the garlic infused oil. So I'm not gonna add garlic. I am gonna add some black pepper. And then I'm gonna give it a taste test. I don't need the sugar or the vinegar in this to make this safe for canning because we are water bath or we are pressure canning this. We are not water bath canning it. So the vinegar and the sugar is for flavor. I never add sugar to caramelized onions when I make caramelized onions. So I want to just taste it and see how these taste before I add any sugar to it. And I am going to skip the balsamic vinegar because I want to use this in all different types of dishes. I don't necessarily want to commit to having the balsamic vinegar flavor in my caramelized onions. Oh my goodness. So sweet. I was wondering if they were going to be as sweet because I used the red onions, which these red onions have a pretty potent flavor. I'm not going to add any sugar. If I added sugar to this, they would basically be candy, and they taste like candy already without sugar. So I'm going to let this cook down just a little bit more, and I think I am going to add just a touch more pepper and salt. I want that pepper to help kind of balance that flavor because they are so incredibly sweet. I'm gonna call these done. So what I need to do before I jar them up is I'm going to get my pressure canner warming. I'm gonna set it for 70 minutes. This is gonna warm while we fill up our jars. I'm just gonna take our onion mixture and bring it next to our jars. I can't find my canning funnel, so I'm gonna take a second to find my canning funnel. Josh found my canning funnel for me. So the recipe, says to do pints, but I think that's gonna be too much. So I'm gonna do half pints, just so that when I open a jar, I can use the whole jar. And we're just gonna start stuffing these caramelized onions, I guess, in this jar. And I got, I think, 20 jars out. I'm not even gonna fill half of them, because these onions cook down so much. I do want to make sure I get the air bubbles out. What I'm just not sure about is what the texture of these caramelized onions is going to be like when they come out of the canner. So time will tell. When I cook with these, I will open one up with you so we can see together how this is going to be. onions are anything like they are coming out of the jar as they are going into the jar this will be a staple that I will always have on our pantry shelf because I love caramelized onions and I don't necessarily want to make them all the time because they are such a labor of love but this would be fantastic to put on a burger put on rice and lentils have it for a base for a pasta sauce. I mean, there are so many options. Topping on pizza. Well, this is filling more jars than I thought it would, so that's good. We got a new lid and ring on each one of our jars. We got 11 half pints. I don't even know how many half pints can fit in this canner, so we are gonna find that out together. I wonder if we can fit them all. Let's see if we can do it. That's 10. Let's see if this third one will fit in the middle. Yep. All right, so we're gonna get the lid on. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna leave it open because it needs to vent for 10 minutes.
Friends, I have some bad news. One of my jars did not seal yesterday. I think it was the 11th one, the one that was sitting up higher, so I think it was my fault it didn't seal. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give this a taste test and see how it is. I was so excited to try it because going into the jar, it was so good. Coming out of the jar, it is awful. It is bitter, it tastes burnt. I think the reason all of the recipes have sugar added to them is because something in the canning process, I don't know if it's that high temperature, high pressure, causes some flavor change in the onions and it is terrible. So I have 11 jars of these caramelized onions, probably 30 pounds of onions, that I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with other than compost. If you guys have any suggestions, Josh thought that maybe you could take them out, add the sugar and recan them, but I just, I can't see that ending up with a good product. The reason I like to can things homemade is because they should be a really good <laughs> yummy product. And I, I mean, you can give me your suggestions. I won't toss these until um, I have the opportunity to hear, you know, maybe thoughts of what I did wrong other than not adding the sugar because these are pretty awful. So I'm pretty disappointed, but that's one of the things about canning is not everything is gonna be a win. What I probably should not have done is done a triple recipe. The first time you can something or the first time, yeah, you can something, maybe I should kind of follow the rule of only making one recipe <laughs> instead of tripling the recipe because if you lose it, that's kind of a big, big loss. But that's part of the process. You win some, you lose some. And this time I lost, <laughs> which it is what it is. I'm, I'm not gonna get too upset about it because it was a learning opportunity. I am going to attempt, but doing a one recipe again, but adding the sugar and see how that goes because the reviews on this are fantastic online. So it's gotta be good and it probably is just my fault. So these are gonna sit here until I know what to do with them, whether we are composting them or not. Thank you for being here along the journey. This is my real life. You know, we're in it together. We can celebrate our successes together and we can learn from our failures together. So don't do what I did. If you're gonna caramelize onions, add the sugar. Don't leave it out. Thank you, friend.